and welcome to those at home joining us now via YouTube. Uh, I'll give you the reading, same reading as last week, James 1 verses 19 to 27. So it's, it's wonderful for you to be joining in. You can pause the video in your time and uh, then hit play and join us for the, for the message. So I just want to begin with some words from last week. And the, the words are, the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Now, I, I just want to say that this is the thing we need, to, we need to remember right now at this time before we go any further. This is what should be at the heart of every believer implanted within us. The saving word of Jesus Christ. To know that facilitates response. Okay, we move from that source. Alright? So now let's look at the readings here today. So James begins, and I've broken this down in a series of, of uh, segments from the reading carrying on from last week. And James begins, but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. Okay, so, so Perkins suggests putting word into practice is required for salvation. And Perkins suggests two readings to cite this. The first one is uh, Luke 28, verse 11. And it's blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Okay, you can see there that it's hearing and obeying. Okay, so it, it's accompanying each other. The second reading is from Romans 2, verse 13. It says, For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. So, so you see that it, it, it's, and there requires an action. Okay? And so often we can get confused with this. Sometimes we can, we can say about, oh, it's, it's all about works. Well, we can get trapped into that, but we need to be reminded that it's not about works, but works are required. Okay? And it is required for salvation, not because of the works themselves, but rather for what the works point to. Do you understand that? It's what the works point to. Okay? So it, it points to the implanted word. It is the test, I suppose, or the measure of whether the word is implanted within us. If, it's, if the word is implanted within us, then works, or doing the word, are a natural outpouring in response to knowing and receiving the gift available in Christ's saving work through our faith in Him. Does that make sense? You know, it's an outpouring of that which is implanted within us. To walk with Jesus is to want to be like Jesus. Amen. To know Jesus is want to be like Jesus. And it's a sign. So the, the accompaniment of hearing the word and doing the word is a sign of one who walks closely and truly with him. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, James says, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they look like. And that's an interesting illustration, you know, that James uses here in, in, in a mirror. And, you know, I think it's important that we understand it. Because a mirror then is, is probably not quite what he's talking about, how we use a mirror today. You know, I look at the mirror, every time I look in the mirror, I want to forget what I see. <laughs> okay? But that's not what James is getting at. See, that's, that's a superficial looking at the mirror. Okay? That's a human looking at the mirror. And uh, it, that's not what he's getting at. What do you see when you look at the mirror? Or look into the mirror. You know, the mirrors of the day that, that James was talking about, they were made of polished metal. And the more expensive ones were polished silver. And they were small and handheld. And they weren't anywhere near as common as what, what we have today in seeing and knowing our own reflections. And uh, the idea 
and this is what a, a commentator is, is suggesting. He says, these are his words in summarising it, if anyone considers himself to be a devout worshipper, okay, so we can read into that, worshipper and of life, without carrying this over into his daily living, the truths that he has heard, his worship is as useless as a glance in a mirror which is straight away lost to mind. Pious genuflection followed by unethical conduct is a travesty upon worship which Jesus and the prophets unreservedly condemned. I mean, that's, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? That's pretty straightforward. You know, so what are we seeing when we look in the mirror? Let me break it down even more. I, I took it another step because um, oh, I'm a little bit simple sometimes. Have we noticed... Okay, if we're talking about mirrors, have you noticed how we worry about how we look to ourselves and to others? And I'm talking about in the, the physical sense. Have you noticed that? <laughs> let, me, let me give you a couple of examples that, that I sort of notice as I'm a bit of an observer, okay? A bit of an observer. And uh, you think about it, you go down to the shops, now, I'm not going to point fingers at anyone, but as you go down the other shops, you've got the big glass shop front windows. Pay attention to, I'm not saying it's you, but pay attention to those who walk past the shop front of the window looking at themselves. <laughs> huh? You know, oh, does, do I look thin? <laughs> You know, so, so think about that. Now, I'm not saying any of you do that, but I'm just saying I've seen people do that. Okay? So, so, so you think about that. We worry about what we look like in the mirror. What about um, how we look in photos? You've, you've heard someone say, I take terrible photos. <laughs> you know? And you know why we take terrible photos? It's because we're too busy worrying about what we're going to look like in the photo, and so we pull our natural faces. <laughs> but do you notice that, that, that we worry about what we're going to look like in a photo? What, why do we worry about that? You know, because this is what people see. So sometimes we don't like, like the truth of what we see, maybe. Well, what about how much time we might spend in front of the mirror with hair or makeup. Obviously, I don't spend a lot of time in front of the mirror with hair or makeup. <laughs> but, you know, it's those things that take, take time. You know, because we have shelves and shelves and shelves of, of these um, products for your hair and all these sort of things. What about the full length mirrors that most of us have in our home? And we all try on different clothes. So I'm going to church today. Well, how does that make me look? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, no, I won't wear that today. And you lay down and try something else on. What about, have you ever seen those uh, posted selfies? You know, people take a photo of themselves? Have you noticed how they always take it from up high so you can't see a double chin? <laughs> have you noticed that? And have you noticed how many of them are actually looking at the photo and they're doing the thing with their lips? Yeah. Now, th these are silly examples. I know they're silly examples. But, you know, this is how we are seeing ourselves in a physical sense when we look in the mirror. And, uh, and it's, it is far, far more superficial than what James is getting at here. James is dealing with something much, much deeper. We're caught on the surface here worrying about what we think we look like to other people. James is saying, listen, you need to look deeper than this. And he's suggesting, I think, on a spiritual level here too. And we've got to ask ourselves, are we willing to go there? Do we really want to see our reflection? Now that's a trick question. Let me get to that in a minute. See, we often say the words. Okay, how often have we heard the words, it's time to get uncomfortable? How often have we heard that? You know? 
We, we say the words. Or if I was to ask you what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I'm sure you could tell me the stuff that you've heard for Sundays over years and years and years and years of hearing that. But what, as a follower of Jesus, do you see in the mirror? Is the reflection these things that you can tell me? Are they the words that we speak? The reflection we need to be seeing in the mirror is not ourselves. It might be, some days for me, it's a little more dim than others. But the reflection should be of Jesus. Because we've heard the word and we want to do the word. The reflection of what we heard needs to be seen in our lives day to day. That's the reflection of Christ in you. James goes on to say, But those who look at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be truly blessed in their doing. You know, we, we need, maybe we need to spend more time adjusting ourselves in the reflection that is required rather than whether these trousers don't suit me or whether my hair looks right. Maybe I need to spend more time adjusting the reflection through the power of the Holy Spirit to more accurately reflect Jesus Christ. Maybe you need to spend more time worrying about that. You know, when we, when we say these words, you know, we can often say, you know, they, the people need to see Christ in us. They need to see Christ in us. Okay? Can people see Christ in you? That's the question. We can't just say the words, we've got to follow it up. Can they? It can be hard to see it in yourself. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. Can you see what's important though? Because when we're moving in that space, when we're moving from the right source, the, the end of James' statement there is, is, you will be blessed. Okay? So you're operating from the right source. God will bless what you're doing. And this is no prosperity doctrine thing here. By blessed, it means blessed in his work, in his service, to his glory, that others may know him in their lives. That they too may grow to reflect the love of God in their lives and lifestyles. Are we one of those? Or are we one of the people where we say the words on Sunday and then immediately forget what we've heard as we go about doing life outside? You know, it, it's, it's interesting to think that because James' next, next little passage here, next sentence is, if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. So if we're not, if we're not doers of what we've heard, all that we're doing is, is worthless. You know, what comes to mind when, when you, you hear this verse, when we hear bridled tongues, it could be rightly seen as reinforcing, you know, verses 19 to 21. Where we, we're talking about being slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. But, you know, the word that's used here, and it says this in the interpreter's Bible commentary, is we don't say their religion is worthless. What we need to be hearing is religious activity is worthless. Okay? So, so if you're not coming from the right source... If we're not doing the words as well as hearing the words, our, if we're coming from the right source, it's, it's worthless. 
and, and it's only religious activity. I can't help but think of the Pharisees in this, this sentence. And it says in Matthew 15, verses 7 and 9, you hypocrites. Isaiah prophesied rightly about you when he said, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how the, the, the words that we speak, the, that which we proclaim, has to be seen in our lives, in our actions? That's what, that's what, what it is. It's, it's a natural response to knowing Jesus. And if we're moving in that space, our worship comes from the right source and we're worshipping God with our whole heart. But those who just say the words and aren't living this out, that, there's a challenge there. They worship in vain. What about in um, Matthew 6, verse 5? You know, it's easy to say the words here all together because we all know and love each other, don't we? It's, it's easy to say that, and you know, I can stand up here and, and be doing perceivably the right thing and then go home and be doing terrible things. Okay? But you don't know that. I'm not doing terrible things at home, I don't think. I'm trying to use that as an example, though. You know, where where you know, it's easy to just say the words and be perceived as one way and living another. We can we can hide it. And Matthew six verse five says, Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, being seen in those places of importance where those people will see this this good stuff coming from them or perceived good stuff, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. It's not enough. Lip service is not enough. It, we, we have to have the expression in our life. This is the measure of our faith. It should be the natural outpouring, the natural following. To have known Jesus is to be like Jesus. Oh, I'm spitting all over the place. <laughs> That's why the front row is always empty. <laughs> We must be careful that as followers we are not all of our lip service. You know, that's not well received. And James says, if this is it, if that's all there is, if it's all about just saying the words, if there's no response or expression, then their religion is worthless. He goes on to say, religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this. And then he goes into practical expression. Okay? To care for the orphans and widows in their distress. And then he goes on to say about how we choose to live our lives. And to keep oneself unstained by the world. I've got written here, it's time to take stock, friends. The measure of our faith is that which flows from us. Okay? We believe, we've received, and it changes our lives to reflect Jesus. We're not driven by duty. We're not driven by what we think we should do. We're not driven by what we think others think we should do. We're not driven by the, the desire of accolades placed upon us by other human beings. It is to be like the Master. That's the fruit of one walking with the Lord. It's a response to the gift of salvation that we receive in Jesus. You know, the, the challenge for us is are we merely hearers of the word or are we doers? Does our life reflect the love and grace that we receive in Jesus Christ? Are we willing to grow in that space? Or better still, do we desire to grow in that space? Do we want to grow in the likeness of Jesus? Or are we satisfied 
We're just going through the motions, saying the words without any um, drive from the source of the implanted word, putting this into practice. And it's easy to forget what our call is. So wrapped up in being comfortable. My challenge to me, to you, let's commit to being real, fair, dick and authentic followers of the risen Christ. True worshippers. Where we're living in the word implanted in us. Where the mirror that people see when they look into us reflects something of Jesus. That we would be truly available to live his call for us as his hands and feet. Not to our glory, but for his glory. In response to all that he has done. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we want to be hearers and doers of the word. We know that's going to look different for all of us. We ask that through your Holy Spirit you guide us along those paths. That you grow us in your life that you remind us of our call, that we long to be your witnesses. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Guide us in those paths that are going to help others to know and to receive your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And just before we... We go, we're going to say farewell to our